So I've got my second big log, 20 foot log, set here on the mill. And I've got it set up, ready to make the first cut. I've already established that these 20 foot logs, that I can turn them with the PV, but I don't really want to do it. It hurts too much. And since I'm right in the middle of flying season here, I don't really don't want to hurt myself until I get done with that. So I've got to figure out some other way to turn that. I had my son help me with the other one after the first turn and then use the bobcat with the grapple on it to turn it again. Well, that's probably what we'll do this time. Anyway, I've got my second log set up on there. It's 17 inches in diameter. This end of it here is actually uh, on uh, up and down, the way it's sitting now vertically is 26 inches, but it's got a pretty good ground swell in it, and by the time you get back down to that first cross member there, it's, it's 23 inches. Oh, and then it tapers down quite a bit from there. Uh, big bell, big ground swell. I figured 23 inches, the other end 17 inches, so that would be six inches total, which would, I should bring that other end up three inches to split the difference on that, so I'm running parallel with the heart to run, so the brain doesn't run out. But I could barely get that thing up in the air with my pry bar. It's, it's slippery, the bark is slipping on it, and it's lifting the whole log, and it's not pivoting any place on there. It's pivoting all the way down here on this end, so. Anyway, I wound up getting two of my sticker pieces underneath there, which gives me a little over an inch and a half, or an inch and three quarters, close to two inches on that, which should be enough. It's better than, than not uh, adjusting for the run out on that at all. Well, anyway, I'm about ready to make my first cut. I gotta go get some earplugs, uh, readjust my guide rollers on there a little wider, and then we'll make the first cut on that one.
I took my first cut at 17 inches, which just barely took off the slab on the other end, on the small end, a little over an inch thick there. And you can see on this end, it's about eight inches thick or so. Anyway, it didn't give me much flat on that end, so I went ahead and took a second one inch cut on it. That took it down to 16 inches, but with that one and a half inch shim underneath it, it actually makes it about 14 inches. So that gives me two inches to take off of that other side to get me down to 12. Anyway, right now I'm gonna need to get the machine going here, the skid steer going to pick that up and turn it over 90 degrees so I can make my next cut. So first I'm gonna have to get this slab and that uh, one inch flitch out of the way that I just cut. So I gotta get the machine started up, warmed up, and and then uh, get that done. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera away now. Well, I got two six by 12s out of that log and two one by 12s. I was hoping I'd get another two by 12 out of it, but I just couldn't do it. That I didn't get quite what I, you'd think out of that log as it had such a big ground swell on it, a uh, big bell on the butt of it. It had a lot of taper in it. Well, it took a lot of meat off of it on that first cut. It not only had the ground swell in it, but it also had a bow in it. I think the second cut that I made on it. From one end, I had plenty of meat on one end, and it got to the middle of the log, and it just run out of wood. It come completely out of the wane. And so we got uh, two pieces out of that slab on that second cut. So I wound up dropping it down an inch and a half and taking a sacrificial inch and a half off there. That cleaned it up. Give me 12 inches wide on that cut. And as I rolled it over on the other side, it was wider that way than it was the other way, so I was able to get 1x12s and the two 6x12s out of it. Anyway, that's good. That gives me two more 6x12s. I've got four, which is enough for the two walls, the two outside walls, uh, which are 40 foot long. These are 20 foot, and I'd need one more to cut into 10 foot lengths if I decide to go to 50 foot on the building. I haven't decided yet. I really won't know until I figure out how much space I've got up there on my fill. Anyway, that gives me enough for the two walls. Now I need another 20 foot 6 by 12 for the back wall and a 16 foot 6 by 12 for the back wall. And then I'm going to come out 30 feet for a loft. So I'll need three more of them of each for that. So I'll need a four total 20 foot 6 by 12s and four total. 16 foot 6 by 12s. If I can get two out of each log, then that means I got uh, eight more logs to cut. So I'm going to get these out of the way. I run out of saw blades now, my sharpened saw blades, so I'm going to have to sharpen blades again. I was hoping I'd to use the new blades that I got, but they're too short and I haven't got a hold of the outfit I bought them from yet to see what we can do about that. Uh, I have to send them back to them or something, but they're too short to run on this mill. So I'm gonna have to run my old blades. And I think I'm gonna change my sharpener over a little bit, change the hook angle on the blades over a little bit. I've been running 10 degree hook angle, which is recommended for most woods, uh, most soft woods. But this spruce, the uh, wood is soft, but the knots are harder than the hubs of hell. So you've got a big density chain as you go through there, and that blade likes to either climb or dip as it goes through some of the knots sometimes. So. I've been changing the blades pretty regular, and then I've been running that mill slow. I've been running it so slow uh, movement in the carriage that I could darn near go have a bite to eat while I was waiting for it, but I'm still getting a little bit of waviness as in it, uh, particularly as I'm cutting the, breaking the logs down because I'm getting into rocks and stuff on there. Now Joe, he suggested I build a debarker. These new mills have debarkers on them that basically use a like a circle saw blade, a, a skill saw blade on them, on a little motor of some kind that runs down into the wood and makes a pre-cut in the wood ahead of the band on the bandsaw mill so that the band is going into clean wood. And that would make a big difference on it. And I've thought about making something like that, but I just haven't wanted to take the time to do it. Most of the things is gonna dull the blade or as it's entering in the wood, but you can get rocks and grit as it's coming out of the wood too and still dull the blade that way. The debarker doesn't really help on that. Anyway, I hadn't wanted to take the time to build one, although the extra time it takes me to scab the bark off of these or take the pressure washer and wash them down, going to that, if I added all that lost time, I'd probably save time by building a debarker.
What I'd really like to do is get a new mill with all X hydraulics and stuff on it. The one that I really lust after is the ones with the uh, log turner and the automatic log dogs and stuff. And they have tow boards on each end of it that you can raise one end of the log or the other end of the log to compensate for the taper in the log. They've got rollers on them. You can actually lift them up and roll the log or cant back and forth on it. So anyway, like I said, that's what my heart lusts after. But those things are two years out right now. If I I were even to think about ordering one night right now it'd take two years to get one so make do with this old girl I've got 20 foot long log number five on the mill here I've taken the bark spud and cleaned off the bark on both sides of it to get the dirt and stuff off of it I'm going to take the pressure washer and wash it down just to make sure it's clean. It's right up against the blade, just about on the other end. I had to cut about six inches or so off of this end. This still had the undercut and everything on it, uh, so it's cut off flat now. You can see it's uh, 23 and a half for 20, 24 inches, so it's almost perfectly round. As perfect as you can get in the wild, I guess. And it's 18 inches on the top. This will give me 10 6 by 12s. And I need 12 of them, so I'm going to need one more log after this one. I think I counted seven more, six more of them up there. So I've got plenty to get my 6 by 12s and the rest of those then I'll start cutting up into probably 1 by 12s because I want to be able to deck the roof first. I'm going to need 1 by 12s to deck the roof and then I'm going to need 2 by 12s for floor joists on the loft and for deck boards on the loft. Uh, I'm not going to have enough wood for all that, but I, I do need to get that roof decked to get it uh, covered up to get it watertight inside the building when I get it together. So that's what I'm going to do next after I get the 6 by 12s cut. All we've got here, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 5, 46, 47, 49, 50, 51. 52 growth rings on that and then you can see some of these are a lot bigger than others uh, and it depends on where what side of the tree it was as to how big it was the ones on this side over here aren't as big there's probably more trees growing against it on that side of course it grew pretty big the first few years then it slowed down as it got bigger that's typical and then it slowed down even more as it got farther out here there's also some, going to be some differences in it depending on what the weather was around the climate. Uh, sometimes it, there was a uh, hot, hot, dry year and it wouldn't grow as much. A cold, wet year it might not grow as much. Anyway, these are a little over 50 years old since they started growing. And I remember these, we moved up here not quite 40 years ago. And in this area where this one was growing, we went out and cut our first Christmas tree out of that the first year. Anyway, and that's how much they've grown in in uh, 30 some years. It's the size of a Christmas tree to the size of making a house timber. So we got a rainstorm coming. I'm going to try to get this one whittled out. We've been slow whittling these things out a few at a time when I get a chance, because I've been pl flying pretty steady. It got really busy for a while. Uh, it's going to start slowing off now. Uh, salmon season is just almost over now. The sage season is winding down. And we still got some work to do, doing what we call peak surveys, uh, flying the streams and counting the, the fish in the streams to make sure we get the escapement and see what escapement we get so we can turn those numbers in to the guys that do the magic with the numbers and try to calculate how many fish are coming back. So there's still uh, some flying left to do, although everything's winding down. I'm still flying every day. The weather is supposed to turn really sour here. This is going to be the first big storm we'll have all year this year so far. Forecast is 30, 40 mile an hour winds, uh, one to two to three inches of rain over the next day. It's starting to drizzle now, so I'm going to take the camera and put it away. Don't dare leave it out here and let it get wet. But so anyway, this is my fifth 20 foot log, and that'll make me at least two. Uh, six by twelves and that one's in pretty good shape that one is pretty straight some of the couple of the ones I've been doing have been uh, hooked pretty good had uh, like banana and so I didn't get as much out of those I uh, got the six by twelves out of them but not much else I got some one inch 
switches and stuff like that, some odds and ends. This one will make a nice timbers. We'll get those cut. I got the first face cut made on this log and I rolled it over, got uh, that face cut squared up with the blade. So we're ready to make another face cut. What I'm doing now is I'm taking the bark spud and cleaning the bark off of here. And this is what I got for bark spud. My wife got this for me several years ago and it's just basically a flat plate and they've made a fl uh, cast flange here for it, riveted in, and it's attached to basically a broom handle or a shovel handle, just a straight hickory handle. And this edge here is sharpened up. I just sharpened it up with a file again, so it's sharp like an axe. So I can take in places where there's knots like that, I can go ahead and chop those off to get them cleaned down to get the dirt out from around them and stuff. So just basically stick that in the bark. And on the green bark, it just fits underneath it and pulls it off. On this butt end right down here, this stuff's a little bit tighter, so it's just peeling off. And I don't need to get it all off of there. All I need to do is get it down to where it's clean to make sure well, there's a spot where it was peeled off and it got a little pitch in it, which picks up rocks. So I'll peel that off. But what was interesting here is I'm peeling this bark off. You can see as I'm going along here, I'm coming up with some little grubs, some little worms, little bugs. Yeah. There's one there, there's one there, spruce bark beetles, there we go, anyway they're all over, here I'll peel this little layer off there, there's one in there. There it is, Isn't that focus on that? Are we not? A little grub. Anyway, uh, so this lower section of this tree here above where the cut was is just full of them. Um, they're all over the place as I start peeling that off. It's kind of interesting. So I just keep peeling this. Like I said, I don't need to get all that bark off there anyway. Um, just to, enough to make sure I get it. So I don't know whether those uh, bark beetles were in there from when this tree was standing or after it was cut when it was on the ground. There's a pupa right there. Whoops, now it's no more. Anyway. That one was starting to change, I guess. We get up here a little farther. You can see where, well, let's see, can we see that? Yeah, up there. There we go. This, where I peeled the bark off, the bark has come right off of that. And you can see the worm tracks here between the bark and the sapwood. So, if that was in that tree already, that tree might not have been uh, long for this world as it is. is that, that bark is dead on there. Anyway, I just thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, I'll go ahead and keep peeling this off. And then we'll make another cut on it. And a little grub. They're all over the place in there. Whoop. No wonder the woodpeckers and stuff like pecking on those things, but yeah. That log is no more. It is now timbers and boards. So that one's all broke down. I got uh, the two 6x12s that I wanted out of it. And then there's one by 12 on top. And then over here I've got three more uh, one inch planks, one inch flitches. One of them is one by 13 and an eighth and the other, another one is one by 14 and an eighth I think. And then one is just a, a flitch. But anyway, they're nice, they'll make nice boards. And then of course I got four slabs. Anyway, that log is all milled up now. I just got finished with it and it started raining about 15 minutes ago or so. It's not 
heavy rain like the forecast is yet. It's just getting started, but it's raining hard enough that it running off of the roof and everything here and dripping on everything and it's got me pretty wet. Oh, I was gonna try to get that timbers and everything all put away and get another log set up on the mill to get it ready for the next time I get a chance to start milling but uh, I'm just gonna put all my tools away get everything put away out of the rain. The wind's supposed to blow so I need to put the strap strap down the tarp around the skid steer so it doesn't blow away and a couple other things and get that stuff done. Anyway, I get this stuff put away. It's supposed to be heavy rain, so I'm not going to get any more done, any more logging done today, any more timber cutting done today. I used those new blades. I got 10 new blades to use. I was kind of saving those for these long logs, and I was also saving them until I could get a cam made for it so I can sharpen those. But I decided to go ahead and start using them once I started whittling on these 20-foot logs ran out of all my other blades, all my sharp blades, and I was going to go sharpen some. And then I decided I would call the company and say the blades that they sent me didn't fit. Decided to get those blades out and measure them and make sure the length of them and stuff so I'd have something to complain about. Once I run a tape around them, they actually measured out perfect. They were 13 feet and 8 tenths. And they're supposed to be 13 feet 10 inches or 166 inches. So anyway, I was trying to figure out why I couldn't get them to fit on the mill, and then I realized, well, I've got some adjustment on that idler wheel on that mill. So I come out and uh, took some time and set it up. I would changed the bearings in that idler wheel and set it all up for those other blades, and they fit on there just right. These wouldn't fit on there at all. They were too tight, so now they fit on there. Uh, I think I've got enough take up that's a hydraulic tensioner on there for the blades and I think there's enough take up on it that it'll work on the old blades still. So anyway I've got the new blades on there. I, I've got my first blade on there. What have I made? I've cut four logs with it I guess. Five logs now. Well, I'm going to change it out after this log and it's still cutting alright but it's got a fly, tooth that's a flyer on it or something. When it goes through those knots it gets some pretty rough uh, cut on it. but. It's cutting good, cutting straight, and it cut that log, but like I said, I think now it's time to retire it and put a new blade on there. I've got one more log to cut for these 6x6s six six, or 6x12s, and then the rest of the material will be cut up into 1x material. Well, anyway, I better go put this camera away. It's starting, even though it's under the umbrella, it's starting to get damp from the splashing and stuff on it. Don't need to. but I got those cants put away or those uh, timbers put away and I brought another log down I've just about got it broke down these are two six inch wide cants here now I got a couple of one inch boards out of the uh, one inch flitches I guess you'd say not boards out of the one side that was a pretty nice log it wasn't so big on the butt it was only 20 20 and a half on the butt here on the big end and it was 18 and a half by 17 and a half on the top end, but there was a big bow in it, so I wound up taking a pretty good chunk off of one side, more off of one side than the other to get it down squared up. So I think I've got enough left on here to make six by 12s, maybe a couple of one by 12s. Turned out that I didn't get any more out of that than the two 6x12s, but I'm happy with those. They're nearly perfect 6x12s. Beautiful, beautiful timbers. So that's it. That gives me my 12 6x12s that I've got calculated out that I need. So that's it on those. So now what I need to concentrate on doing is, is I need 1x12s. And since the trusses that I have are 37 feet wide, there's a one foot overhang, so that's say 39 or 40. Uh, if I used 1x12s, that would mean I'd need 41x12s. 
but then we got the pitch of the roof to worry about two, so that means let's say three more, so I may say 45 one by 12s. That's just for 20 foot uh, section, actually an 18 foot section because there'll be a two foot overhang over the end. 40 foot section, I'll need twice that many, so I'm going to need over 100 of them. Now, normally on a shed, you might put two buys or one buys or whatever like that and space them out on 6 inch or 12 inch or something like that spacing in between it and put a metal roof on it but this is going to be a closed in space on the loft area dry storage space and if you just have metal roofing up there on top of skip sheeting on top then the condensation forms on the underside of the metal roofing uh, just normally and it'll drip down in the building and it'll be wet so I'm going to put a solid roof deck up on there and then we'll put tar paper or something like that on top of that and then the roofing on top of that so we're not going to get any condensation dripping down into the building from the inside. Anyway that machine is cooled off a little bit, the engine's cooled off a little bit, I'll shut it down and load these two timbers on the Bobcat and go put them away. Well that does it on the 6x12s.